If you want to simplify your life, business, or career, creating your own GPT could be a game changer for unlocking seamless AI automation like never before. I'm going to build three custom GPTs for you today, and I'm going to be as detailed as possible so you can surely follow. So first things first, you've got to have a ChatGPT Plus account to access the Create Your GPT feature, which you can find at chat.openai.com create. Or if you're already on the website, just go to the Explore tab and click Create a GPT. Now, let's check out the screen. On the right, you've got a sneak peek of what your GPT will look like. On the left is where the magic happens. It's the messaging window that lets you talk to the GPT builder. So essentially, this is the GPT that will help you build your own GPT, which is super cool. So let's get started. You know that feeling right after you hit Costco or Walmart, and then your wallet turns into a crazy mess of crinkled receipts? And when you come home, all set to figure out what you spent your money on, but ugh, it's just a big pile of paper chaos. Now, think about a way to make life easier. Like, what if you could snap a pic of your receipt and boom this cool gadget helps you figure out what you bought and sorts it into organized categories no more trying to figure out if that crumpled thing is a receipt for chips or soda and that's exactly what ai automation can do and today we'll be building exactly that using chat gpt i'm going to start with the following prompt Develop a GPT that enables me to upload a picture of my receipt, scan and identify all the items listed, categorize them, and calculate the total expenses for each category, as well as the expenses for each of the items listed. In the meantime, let's locate a sample Walmart receipt for the purpose of this tutorial. I've got one, it's not perfect quality, but it'll do the job. Going back to the builder, it says, great choice. For the name of this GPT, how about Expense Tracker Pro? Does that work for you? And I'll say, yes, that works. And now it generates a profile picture for me. Here's the initial profile picture for Expense Tracker Pro. It features a sleek calculator design with a magnifying glass set to a background of assorted receipts in a futuristic sci-fi style. Do you like it? Or would you like to change the design? I like it. Now. Now, it wants me to refine the context of the expense tracker. Is there any other specific functionality or additional role you'd like to include in its capabilities? For example, should it provide insights or summaries based on the expenses? I would say it should include the capability of providing insights or summaries based on the user's expenses. It then asks, are there any specific points you think Expense Tracker Pro should focus on or steer clear of? Now, we can go back and forth on this. It might throw a couple more questions at us as it tries to understand our preferences. I'll go ahead and answer this. It should prioritize accuracy in scanning and categorization while avoiding direct financial advice or predictions. Emphasis on user privacy, security, and customization for a tailored experience is crucial. And lastly, it asks, how would you like Expense Tracker Pro to personalize its interactions? It should remember users' preferences for receipt categorization and use a friendly and approachable tone. All right, so it's good to go. To test it out, upload the receipt from Walmart we saved earlier and say, do this one. So by the way, later on, with a little bit more functionality, you'll be able to do this straight from your phone. Just snap a picture of your receipt and this GPT will automatically run and categorize it for you. What's more, soon enough, you'll likely be able to link it to cloud storage services like Google Drive or iCloud, keeping everything in sync. And if you maintain an Excel spreadsheet for your expenses, there's a good chance this could be directly saved into it as well. All right, let's check if it's doing it correctly. So the first few items we have are 18 Albuquerque for $15, another 18 Albuquerque also for $15, oil to CY160Z for another $6.82 and a trimmer line worth $2.88. Now let's see what ChatGPT says. It listed 18 Albuquerque for $15 each, correct. It also has the remark saying, this appears to be the same item listed twice. The last two items, oil to CY160Z and trimmer line both have the correct prices too. So at first glance, everything is looking good, but it seems it didn't categorize at all. So it says down here, with this detailed information, I will now categorize these items and create a new Excel spreadsheet with the transaction details, categorized expenses, and totals. Let's proceed to categorize these items. You can download the spreadsheet from the following link. Now you have the option to further refine it, not just for categorizing the output in the Excel spreadsheet, but also in the chatbot. Let's check out the spreadsheet it generated. Impressive. The Excel sheet now shows categories like outdoor, gardening, healthcare, home, and grocery in the first column. The next column lists the items for each category and the last one displays the price for each item. I've noticed there's a second tab for category subtotals. It neatly lists all the categories along with the subtotal prices. While it might lack overall totals for all categories, it serves as an excellent starting point if you're aiming to bid farewell to those crumpled receipts and set up an organized automated database. Now this GPT can undergo further refinement with plenty of room for improvement, but I hope this has brought value to you, sparking inspiration to embark on your own GPT journey and create seamless 
seamless automation in your life. All right, so let's quickly set up another GPT, but this time we're going to chat with it back and forth as it looks like it has some issues. So we're going to go ahead and click on the configure tab and build it from there directly. We're naming it 10K Ninja. What does it do? Well, it reads a company's 10K and it extracts useful data. Now, the 10K form is like a super detailed report that companies file every year about how they're doing financially, which is way more detailed than their regular annual report. So for capabilities, we're gonna leave it as it is with all three capabilities in check. For actions, we're not touching it for the time being, but we can always come back on it later on. So here's Tesla's investor relations page. It's got different columns called SEC filings. These are yearly reports that the US government asks companies to make. It's a solid clue about how the companies are doing. They gotta be straight up with investors, but there are rules about how they do it. One big report they make is the 10K. For example, here's the one from January 30th, 2023, and it's available in both HTML or PDF. So let's go back to the configure tab. Under instructions, let's say you are an expert stock analyzer. You read 10K easily and understand the important insights they provide. You've read most writings by Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, and all other legendary investors. Now, there's no one right way to tell GPT what to do. You gotta try different ways to see what works best. Let's say you're telling GPT to write something. If you provide more detailed or creative instructions, you can influence the tone and style of the generated content. So if you say, hey, be creative and fun, you'll get a lively response. But if you say, be serious and technical, you're gonna get something more professional. It's like telling a robot what kind of mood you want in your writing. I will provide a link to an investor relations page for a given company, download the latest 10K and read through it. Give me the top bullet points from the report and overall sentiment. Then provide several examples of things we can go deeper on and is specific to that report. For conversation starters, I'm just gonna put the Tesla SEC filings page. Let me see if this works. I'm gonna put Amazon's too. To search for the company's 10K page, you can just type the IR plus the name of the company. So I'll just paste that in there. And lastly, let's do Microsoft and I'm just gonna paste that in there. So let's see if our creation works. This is called the 10K Ninja. Reads a company's 10K and extracts useful data. And I'm gonna start with Tesla. As you can see, it's begun browsing the web. It now says it's encountered technical difficulties in retrieving the document. So I'm just gonna manually download the PDF and upload it here directly. Now, OpenAI might be cautious about letting the model visit government sites on its own because some folks found ways to get past paywalls using code interpreters. They could be worried about people doing shady things. So it's probably better if you're the one uploading the stuff instead of the model doing it by itself. And it came back now with a response. The 10K PDF I uploaded was from Microsoft this time, and it shows Microsoft's 10K report with a focus on AI and cloud computing. It shows how Microsoft prioritized environmental sustainability, employee well being, and racial equality, but it doesn't show any details about revenue. So we're just going to upload Amazon's 10K form and see what happens. So here it talks about Amazon's business overview, a customer centric approach. Amazon's core philosophy is customer obsession, invention, operational excellence, and long term thinking. But I would like to know more about the revenue side of things. So I'm I'm going to say, how about the revenue? And finally, it was able to dig deeper and give a comprehensive annual report. In Amazon's 2022 annual report, it is noted that the company's total unearned revenue as of December 31st, 2022 was 16.1 billion US dollars. This unearned revenue mainly consists of prepayments for AWS services and Amazon Prime memberships. Out of the unearned revenue of December 31st, 2021, which amounts to 14.0 billion, 11.3 billion was recognized as revenue during the year ended December 31st, 2022. So for investors, think about the speed at which I crafted this feature. With a few tweaks, it's not just about info. It can generate charts. Imagine pairing it with real-time internet scanning. Bots can keep you updated, offering a trading advantage. The key is speed, gathering and understanding information fast. This feature provides a quick summary for spotting trends and digging deeper into interesting details. It's all about being really fast. And just a quick tip, if you want to share or show off what you made here, hit the save button. You'll get a few options. Keep it just for you. Share it with a link or make it public. To go public, set up your builder profile first, click the little pencil, and you can tweak things like the name or add a cool domain. Your name pops in from your builder details, but you might want your company name or something catchy. If you want to keep it super private, choose only me and it stays just for you. Easy peasy. All right, let's do one more really quick. In the configure tab, we're going to name it comic strip. The description is creates a daily comic strip about an AI agent named Bobby. The instructions would be you are a world-class comic strip creator. 
you create a daily three-panel comic about a humorous situation. The main character is Bobby, an autonomous AI agent whose goal is to make money. Use Dolly 3 to create the images. Three panels consist in characters. The third panel will be the punchline. The user will tell you the subject of today's comic. Start by writing out just text and the description of what happens. If the user approves, create the visuals. Now, let's try how it works. So essentially, it gave us just a two-panel comic strip, even though it says, here is the three-panel comic strip featuring Bobby learning about taxes and paycheck deductions. Each panel captures a moment in the story. So I'm going to say, there is just two images. We need three images for a three-panel comic strip. And finally, it gave us a three-panel image. So the first one represents Bobby's excitement upon receiving his first paycheck. The second one depicts Bobby's confusion upon seeing the actual amount after deductions. The third one highlights Bobby's humorous shock upon realizing that even as software, he's subject to taxes. In conclusion, I've observed something really important, especially if you've been following this channel. GPTs can do amazing stuff, but working with it is like a skill. The more you practice, the better you get at getting the output you want. So go ahead, explore, and have fun with your GPT creations. As always, thank you for watching, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next one.